What's going on Facebook? This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, the founder of the highest paid part-time job of the world options training program. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to enter and exit every options play. And the reason why I'm creating this content is because I know a lot of people, um, they take an options training from somebody else. They might have taken my options training. And one of the challenges they always say they have is they don't know how to enter and exit the play. And because I've never had this particular issue, I, um, I've done a lot of questioning and research on why they have that particular question because I teach people about strike prices and things of that nature. But I, I've noticed that they still have this particular challenge of how do I enter and exit the play? And through a lot of questioning, uh, current and former students, I kind of realized that they really didn't understand one of the principles of finance and this is why they were having this particular issue. So when you take finance or if you're raised to kind of understand the markets, but really when you go to college and you take finance, something that they kind of get you to understand is that there's something called an acceptable rate of return or an acceptable return on capital, right? So it's a concept or principle that you have in your mind as to if I invest my capital in this particular situation, what return percentage wise or sometimes what we call rate of return is acceptable for me to take this particular action. And one of the biggest challenges that we have as working class and poor black people is we're never asked this question anytime during the course of our life. So we a lot of times enter situations and we ask somebody else what we're going to get out of the situation. Okay? And that's not how capital works. How capital works is capital goes into a situation already understanding that I believe I can get this out of the situation therefore it's worth my time so what we really have is we have an issue of education and we also have an issue of belief because many of us don't believe that we're worthy of going what's going on Monique we don't have a belief that we're worthy of going into a situation and requiring a return on that particular investment to be worthy of our time because we spend the majority of our life having other people dictate to us where we need to be and what we need to do. What's going on, Taylor? What's going on, Samuel? So the question you always want to ask, right, first is, let's say you got $100. We're going to keep it real easy. Let's get a real basic number. You got $100. You're looking at a particular option. What return on that $100 is acceptable to you? That's the first question. And if you can't answer that question, you don't need to be looking at options. So we have $100 that you're thinking about playing options on. What percentage of return is acceptable to you? So let's say hypothetically we say 30%. So we are saying that 30% return is acceptable for us, right, to play this option. That return is acceptable for us to even be involved in this situation. So that 30% is $30 because we're dealing with $100. Then the second question we want to ask ourselves is, what is the time in which is acceptable for our money to be locked up to get this 30% return. What, what, how long are we willing to allow our money to be locked up in this particular I uh, instrument for us to get that rate of return? So let's say we say uh, 30 days. So we've already established that we got $100, 30% return is acceptable, and the amount of time is going to be 30 days. These conditions are acceptable for us to put our $100 out. Then the next question we want to ask ourselves is, how much are we willing to lose before we feel we need to pull out of the situation, right? So let's say we're willing to lose another 30% on the downside. So that means that we got $100. If it goes down to 70, we're going to pull out because after the 70, a 30% loss, we're no longer willing to stay in this particular situation, even if we haven't gained the 30% or we have not hit the 30-day time span. Now that we've established that, now we're able to start looking at options. But the problem a lot of us have is no one in, the, in our whole life has ever asked us what return is acceptable for you to be in this particular situation. So many of us work nine to fives. We invested in 401ks. We let the people that, that run the 401k tell you what the return is, right? But the people that ran the 401k never told you or asked you, is this return acceptable? So why did you let them tell you that that is acceptable? You never see, see them. So they're going to you in the 401k. The people that's managing the 401k are saying, hey, we can get you 6% a year. And then a particular company 
will match uh, up to 5% or whatever you put in, yada, yada, yada. So what you're increasing the pool of money you pull in so that makes, makes your 6% bigger over the whole because you put more money in. The question I want to ask you is, that, is 6% is six percent acceptable to you? So they don't start off asking that question because part of their conditioning is to get you to accept what they're giving you. And part of their conditioning is to get you to think that they're going to tell you what the situation is and you're going to just accept it. Where when your capital, capital goes in and says, you know what? Either this situation is acceptable or unacceptable for me to be in it. And if it's not acceptable, then I just don't get involved in it. And I take my capital and I go somewhere else. So one of the reasons why we got a lot of people caught up in that Tulsa, the Tulsa real estate fund. Now, no one has gotten a return from that. In fact, uh, somebody showed me an Instagram video where he told the people that have put their money into it that he's going to continue to roll that time span over into a later time span to which I guess they're going to get a return on it. But the problem for them is that the majority of those people never said, what is going to be the return on capital for me to be in this particular instrument? They never asked that question. So because they never asked that question and the guy that's managing that fund knows that they've never been asked that question because he understands the audience that he's dealing with, he's never going to present the question to them. He's going to get them caught up in everything else except what is an acceptable return on your capital. So it's really easy to determine where you're going to enter and exit out of any options play. The first thing you want to ask yourself is what is a return on capital that's acceptable? I don't look at break even. I don't go in trying to figure out uh, statistically what this particular option is going to return to me if it goes the way I want it to go. I've already determined if I'm going to put this much money at risk, what return is acceptable? And how long do I want this particular money to be tied up in this particular security or instrument? And if I don't believe I can get that return from it, then it's not worth my time and I need to take my capital to go into another direction. Then we start talking about strike prices and things of that nature. But one of the biggest challenges that I'm seeing in a lot of my students is no one has ever asked them certain questions. And so because no one has ever asked them certain questions, they've never thought about certain things. So many of them, no one has ever come to them and say, well, what, what return is acceptable for you to invest your capital? No one has ever asked them that question. We're dealing with people that's in their 30s and their 40s and their 50s and their 60s. We're not dealing with people that's 19, 21 years old. So because they've never been asked these kind of questions, they've never had to figure this out for themselves. So now they're finally starting to ask themselves and starting to think the way capital thinks is what return is acceptable for me to put my capital at risk? What is the, the time span that is acceptable to have my capital tied up trying to get that return? And then what am I willing to lose? And once you understand that, it's really easy to enter and exit out of the options market because the way I make my plays is I know before I go into play what I'm looking to get out of it. I know how long I'm looking to have that capital tied up and I already know what I'm willing to lose trying to get that return. And once I determine that, once I hit that particular benchmark, I automatically exit. And I normally try to exit before I hit my time span window. So let's say I say it's going to take 90 days to get the rate of return. If I get it in 30 days, I exit. Why? Because I can take my capital and go somewhere else and it's still not going to be tied up for another 60 days. You understand that? So these are the kind of questions and this is the kind of stuff that a lot of these people and a lot of these other quote unquote options training courses and stock market training courses are not teaching you. I don't recommend anybody put their money in a 401k if you have not decided what return is acceptable to you. A lot of people's 401ks are down now because of the stock market. Is that acceptable to you? Why are you keeping your money in there if that's not acceptable? But see, you've never determined what's acceptable because part of our life as black, poor, and working class people is going along with things because we think that's what we need to go along with. And never saying, well, you know what? This situation is unacceptable. Therefore, I'm going to go in this direction because we don't think there's any other direction to go into. So we think the only way to get a return on our money is to put our money into a 401k. Well, that's not true. But because you think that's the only way to put your money is the 401k, when you lose 29% of your 401k because the overall market goes down, 
You don't know what else to do, so you just keep your money in that 401k. And the people that are running that 401k, they're savvy to capital. They're savvy to finance. So they know that you've never asked yourself, is this return acceptable? Because the reason why the stock market is selling off so much over the past 30 days is because once the market started to fall, capital started to say that the return on capital is no longer acceptable. Therefore, I'm going to also sell off. So you're seeing a lot of people have put their money into dollars. The dollar went up. Why? Because everybody's sitting on cash right now because they're trying to figure out where they can put their money to get a rate of return that's acceptable. And until they can do that, they're not going to risk losing their money. See, these are the kind of questions we don't talk about. We got people running around here talking about martial law and this, that, and the other. Well, you're not going to do nothing about martial law, so why are you worried about it? So if you're putting your money into a 401k, and over the past 30 days, you've lost over 10% of what you put in, understand, you're working to create that capital. Your labor's creating that capital. Why are you putting the money that is being created by your labor down a black hole and you're not doing anything about it? And you're just hoping that one day the market is going to turn around. But you got to understand, because you're negative now, you got to get back to zero before you can get positive. So you're already in a hole. But the people that are controlling that mutual fund, they're never going to tell you to pull your money out because they make money managing your money even if your money's doing bad. They still get paid. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? And many of them may not even have their money in the same fund that you got your money in, even though they're managing that money on your behalf. So didn't want to sidetrack it and go into that other diversion, but I wanted you to kind of understand that our psychology and the way we think about things and the kind of questions that we've been exposed to are a really big determinant on how we're moving in this particular environment. And a lot of people are coming to me and they have questions about specific things. And the reason why they don't know how to make these particular decisions for themselves is because no one has ever sat down and asked them these type of questions and made them think about it. And so what makes me different than everybody else that's claiming they teaching this type of stuff is when you get around me, I'm going to ask you these kind of questions because I understand that you have to be laced a certain kind of way to understand how to make certain kind of decisions. And as a person that's savvy in the markets, you should always be able to answer. If I'm going to put this kind of money into something, what return is acceptable? And if you can't answer that question, you don't have any business investing in anything. You might as well go ahead and just put your money into your mattress. So if you know somebody that can get value from this, share it out to them. If you got any questions, hit me up in the comments. This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, the founder of the highest paid part-time job in the world. And I'll talk to you later.